Hello, I'm Rob with ScrappyDoo.com, and I hope you're ready for another great tutorial. All right, in this overview, we're going to be uh, in the Shortcuts Lot program, and we're going to be focusing on the Shapes Property box right here that you see me moving around here, and. Uh, we're, we're going to a, a little bit of depth of what uh, what everything does in this box. You know, what what can it do for you kind of thing. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see, this is just a text that I typed into Scal. Uh, same here with a different font. And right here is an SVG file that was created uh, in Inkscape. So uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this this property window and what it can do for you. Now, if you don't have this property window, you can always go to Window Shape Properties. Or uh, I'm sure you can go to uh, to edit preferences, restore defaults, and you should be able to see it. So all right, so uh, I have the text selected. So uh, this this window here will come alive. As you can see, if I select off of it, you know it just goes to gray. You know you can't do anything uh, with it. So you're gonna have to have something selected. So in this case, I have the text selected and the style here. This is uh, gonna be your your uh, style effect of what you're gonna be uh, applying to the text. As you can see, there's uh, there's several things that you can apply to the text. You have shadow, blackout, shadow, blackout, and mixed. Now I'm not quite sure what mixed is, but we're going to go through the uh, the other three. All right, let's start with shadow, and uh, all it is is uh, you know it's going to be putting a shadow you know around the text. You know you can use this as uh, you know you have your normal text, and you go ahead and cut that out, and then you want to lay it on top of uh, you know you want a shadow behind it. That's what the uh, shadow feature is for. Now this box to the right is uh, is a number, and you can of course change this number. I, I guess the default is set at three, and uh, as you increase the number, you're going to increase the shadow uh, effect to that object. Now uh, the shadow also applies to SVG files, so you go ahead and hit shadow. You can see what it does to uh, to the coffee cup. So all right, so back to the text. Let's go ahead and. Uh, Go back to here and see what's next. You have blackout. Now blackout's gonna, uh, you know, take your normal text, and you know you're gonna uh, all the all the inside of the letters, you know, for example, you know, are gonna disappear. You know, it's sort of gonna put like a, a boundary, you know, around the uh, around the object. So all right, so let's go ahead and see what uh, what it does to the to the normal coffee cup. So here's the normal coffee cup. And you can go ahead and go down to blackout, and it took all the insides out. Now, say you wanted a shadow blackout. Well, that's uh, that's exactly what uh, what this is right here, and uh, you know comes comes out pretty nicely. So that so that is the uh, the three different styles you know that uh, that I know of, other than normal, that uh, that go with this program. Now. Uh, what you'll see next is the X Y, and if uh, you remember back in your your uh, you know your elementary days, you know or middle school days, you know it, it corresponds to the X Y grid of this mat, and of course zero zero is going to be the top left corner, you know of the grid. So say for example you have this text, you know off the chart, you want to bring it back, you know where you can move it, you just hit zero, and uh, you know zero. For the Y, and uh, it will it will go back. The reason why I didn't do it there because I didn't hit return. So uh, so that's that's all that uh, the X Y grid is. And of course, you know you you slide it all the way you know, over to the right. You know, of course it's 12. You know, same same thing. You know, going down. You know, you see the Y go to 12. So uh, it's just basically taking your map, your mat, and making it a grid. Sort of the the nudge tool. Is uh, say you want to be get specific, you want to get down to the nitty gritty, um, and it just nudges, you know, left and right, up and down. As you can see, I'm I'm clicking this with the mouse and it's moving the text. You can also individualize the the letters and uh, do the same thing. You know, it's just a little little technique that they give you to uh, to be more precise on the movement of your letters. So, uh, you know, same thing with the SVG. That's what the nudge tool does. So, all right, uh, the, the next next uh, area you'll come to is the, the width and the height. And uh, key proportions uh, is going to be, if you input a number here, say, for example, 3, and hit return, it will automatically adjust the height, you know, proportionally. 
Now if you don't have these selected, you can individualize the width and the height and your image will be skewed from the original uh, original values. So you go ahead and hit you know, 4 on this and as you can see the height stayed the same but I have an extra wide coffee cup now. So, uh, so the width and height, this is what uh, this is what it's adjusting right here. You know, here's here's the width, you know, and then the height is uh, is right here. So that's sort of like taking these these keys right here and uh, and making them over here in the shapes property. And then the proportions when you click this, that is just like having these handles right here using these handles. So it's, you know the shapes property is is a way to be more precise. All right, so the rotate angle. Um, right now, it's set at angle. You can have it as skew, but uh, but what this does is uh, it affects this right here. Uh, rotating right now is rotating over an angle. Of course, you can input the angle you wish right here manually, or you can use this handle. And uh, if you go to skew, you know you can rotate this way and this way and excuse it. So that's that's an you know well, what the rotate feature does. Now flipping shapes does exactly what it does. Uh, when you hit flip shapes on text, it's going to take each letter and just flip them. You know it's not going to be a complete mirror effect, but it, it does flip the letters. So as you can see, that's the S flip, the C flipped, and so on. But when you uh, when you flip an SVG file, it uh, it will uh, act like a mirror. So it, it actually flipped, you know, flipped the letters as well. So that's what the flip shape does. Now weld that can be a whole class in itself, but uh, but to give a brief brief thing on what it what it can actually do is, I uh, say I wanted to weld the C and the S together. I can just scoot the C over to the S, uh, you know, and hit you know hit the weld button. You know, and when I go to preview, it will uh, you know have welded those letters. Now, of course, you can always weld uh, text, you know, to uh, to SVGs. So if I go ahead and hit weld on this, make sure that's welded, and then when we go to preview mode, you know, you can you can see that the coffee cup and the the letters are are welded together. Let me bring this down a little, you know towards the bottom here and show you exactly. So say so I wanted to weld those two together, I'm going to hit the preview button and as you can see it's going to be you know, one continuous cut instead of uh, cut into each other. So so basically you know that's that's what the weld does. Uh, the next thing you'll come down to, to notice is the uh, you know all this is is identifying what you selected and uh, for this this is the uh, the font that I use. And it's handwriting. You know, if you click the coffee cup, it's going to tell you what SVG file I uh, I uploaded. You know, same thing with this text right here. I use the Mona Lisa solid. So basically, in a nutshell, you know, that's that's what the uh, the shapes property window box can do for you in Scout. So with that, I'm Rob with ScrappyDude.com.